section 1.1 the science and art of data in this section we're going to cover a lot of the terminology that we'll be using throughout the rest of this chapter and really throughout the rest of the year so to start let's define what statistics is and it's the science of collecting analyzing and drawing conclusions from data so in other words in this class we're either going to be given data or we'll collect it ourselves and there's a number of different uh, statistical methods or techniques that will apply to it. And then ultimately, our, our goal is to draw conclusions about this data. When we talk about an individual, we're talking about a person, a person, animal, or thing described in a set of data. And when we talk about a variable, we're talking about any attribute that can take on different values for different individuals. So for example, if we were polling our class uh, or collecting data on our class, the individuals would be the students, so you yourself would be an individual, and the variables are the things that we're collecting data on. So maybe height, GPA, eye color, favorite football team, etc. In this table here, the individuals would be the roller coasters. Okay, so each roller coaster is an individual that we're collecting this data on, and the variables are all these things. So the type, the height, the design, etc. And those variables change for each roller coaster. When it comes to variables, there are two different types, the first of which is called a categorical variable. And a categorical variable is typically non-numeric. Right? They're values that take on labels. So for example, the type. Okay, the type gets classified into a label, uh, in this case, of either steel or wood, all right? If we think about it in another way, those labels can be separated into categories, hence the name categorical variables. The other type of variable is a quantitative variable, and these are numeric. They're either measured or they're counts. So the height, the speed, the duration, etc. We can see all those are numbers. We can do things like average them, find the mean, find the median, etc. There are certain situations where a numeric variable or a numeric value can be categorical, and that's when we wouldn't want to perform any of those operations on it. Like, so for example, we would never be interested in finding the average of a bunch of different zip codes. That would be a useless value. So the zip code itself is actually categorical because it's while it's a number, it's not giving us any kind of measurement or count or quantity. So what does a data set look like? In this example, we have a random sample of 40 US high school students, and they were asked the question, would you prefer to be rich, happy, famous, or healthy? And here we can see their responses. Now, when we look at this data set, it's normal to feel a bit overwhelmed trying to uh, interpret this. Okay, so one of our first jobs in, this is in statistics is to be able to summarize this data set with some kind of image or a numerical um, display that'll let us quickly take it, a uh, look at it at a glance and get an impression of the data. So the first way we're going to do that is with a frequency table. When we talk about frequency in statistics, we're talking about a number. And a frequency table is going to show the number of individuals in each data value. So if we were to look at famous, for example, we could just go through and kind of tally up how many people chose famous. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just make tally marks for each of those four uh, categories. And a frequency table is just gonna show us that at a glance. So when we look at this table, we can see right away, most students are choosing to be happy the least are choosing to be healthy. And then it's always good at the bottom there just to have a total that adds all those numbers up. Now, if we're asked to make a relative frequency table, we've added one word to the title here. Okay, instead of a frequency table, we have that word relative in front of it. And when we see the, rel the word relative in this class, we're talking about proportions or percentages. So we're just gonna take each of these values, we're gonna divide it by the total to convert it into the percentage of people who chose famous, for example, which would be 0.175 or 17.5%. You could write it either as a decimal or percentage. I typically write it as decimals. Uh, we do that for each of them, and obviously it should total 100% if we add up all these values. When we talk about a distribution of a variable, it's just telling us 
what values the variable can take on and how often those uh, values occur. So we can see that from our frequency table and we can see it in percentages in our relatively uh, relative frequency table.